Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Easy 11 Plus Live lesson. You can hear some church bells going crazy in the background, I think, but I hope they aren't too disruptive. Um, Dimitri says hello. Oh, he also says biff, bish, bash, bosh, put me down. Dimitri, but you love these lessons. These are your fans. Look, look at their names listed in the comments. Funny Bunny is saying hey. Malini is saying, how are you, Robert? She means Dimitri. I think she just typed the wrong name. Um, anyway, it's fantastic to have you all here. We're looking at the second part of the Manchester Grammar School paper that we looked at um, a couple of weeks ago today. Calm down, boy. Calm down. Calm down. I'm trying to train him not to bite so I can't let him get too carried away here. Come on, Dimitri. Hang on for a bit. Say hello to people. That's it. That's it. That's it. It's nice. Um, don't forget to check out all the links in the video description. Uh, in particular, have a look at the links for 11 plus lifeline if you're just starting your 11 plus preparation. It's perfect when you've got a year to 18 months to go until your exams. And don't forget to look at the benefits of becoming a channel member. Click join underneath the video. Oh, he's back. Um, and uh, then you can find out how to access lots of extra videos, particularly with questions for lots of specific schools. Have a look at the file linked in the video description called Video List. It's your great 11 plus preparation resource. It includes, it tells you all the videos on my channel with links for every single one of them and how to access all the worksheets. So you've got everything in Easy 11 plus at your fingertips. I think the phrase is, if you click on the video, li video list ch file, goodness me, I'm waffling like crazy, down below. And please remember to like and subscribe. The live chat for today's lesson is for subscribers. You can subscribe to the channel completely free. Just click subscribe underneath this video. Right, that's enough waffle for now. You don't drink my coffee. You don't like coffee. Um, he doesn't. He doesn't like coffee. He didn't drink it in the end. Oh, I do. It's what keeps me going through these lessons, apart from your wonderful company. Right, let's get stuck in and let's have a look at the questions that we're looking at today. So the last time we looked at the first half of the paper, which was really focused on comprehension in particular, um, I'm also seeing some comments from Facebook this time because of the way I've got my streaming set up. So if you're on Facebook and make a comment, I may well see that as well. Okay, um, so here we've got some verbal reasoning. Um, always take care to read the instructions and to look at the example. So there are two words listed. One letter can be taken out of the first word and placed in the second word to make two new words, which must both make sense. We can't change the order of the letters. Um, and there are four options. OK, so let's have a look at the questions here. We can see um, that we've got camp and T. And we can see that the answer is C, because if we take M from camp, we have cap, and then we put that in T onto the end of T and we get team. So we've got two words without the order of letters being changed just by taking that word from camp and putting it into T. It's a pretty common kind of verbal reasoning question. If you practice verbal reasoning for other exam types, you may well have come across this particular kind of problem. Okay, so scrolling down we have horse and though. So we get the option of taking out O, R, S, or E. So if we take out O, we get Rus, which is not a word. Take out the R, we get Hose. Okay, so now we've got something that works for the first word. Can we put it into the second word? Um, and so where might the R go? Through, T-H-R-O-U-G-H. And so that works. And so immediately we can see that the answer to this one is B. So it's quite straightforward. Now, as always, when I'm talking about reasoning problems, I'm stressing the importance of being systematic, of having a clear method. So we've tried to take each letter out of the first word and then tried to insert it into the second. Um, and by the time we found an answer that works for these, we don't need to try the other options because if it works and we know it works, then it works. Now, remember something very, very important. Do not write R in the box there. You need to write the letter A, B, C, or D of the option that you're choosing. You don't write the answer, the letter R, okay? Next one, we got feast and cards. I'm gonna move my keyboard out of the way so I can pull my tablet a little bit further across. Oops, bashing the microphone, apologies if that just exploded your eardrum. Um, okay, so we've got feast and we've got card. If we take the F out, we get east. Okay, so that works for the first word. Option A here works for the first word. Does it work for the second? No, so we can't put an F anywhere there. So even though it works for the first word, it doesn't work for the second. What about B, E? If we take out E, we get fast. 
Okay. Um, Caird, 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 Caird. So B works. Oh dear, we got Dimitri on the rampage here, chewing up letters. I hope he isn't chewing anything very important or eating the contents. So um, that's option B. Now there's an important lesson here. Um, I went through trying the sounds and I said, oh, Caird, not a word. But of course, C-A-R-E-D is actually pronounced Caird. And so often with verbal reasoning, you need to be very attentive to the possibility of different pronunciations of words. Don't just get bogged down in one way of saying a thing. Consider them, that there might also be another way. Be phonetically flexible. 23. Month and doze. Okay, so we take the M off, we get onth, not going to be that one. Take the O out, we get nth, not going to be that one. Take the N out, we get moth. So that works, okay? M-O-T-H. So now let's see whether we, whether we can put the N in the second word. And oh look, we can have dozen, 12 things. So C is clearly the answer. Again, we're writing C, not N in the answer space. The mark goes for writing C. That may sound really obvious, but when you're under pressure in an exam, it's really easy to write the wrong thing. Just take the time to be sure that you're doing this right. Okay, 24, we got based and sick. So we try the same thing again. Aced. Hmm, not really, not spelled like that. Um, so you could have aced, A-C-E-D, she aced the test, but that isn't spelt A-S-T-E. So be wary that just because something sounds right, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is right. English is really annoying like that. What a nice straightforward language like, I don't know, Italian, where the sounds and how things look almost always match up, more or less. Uh, but unfortunately we don't have that, we've got English. Um, what about B, if we take out the A, we get bzd, no. C, take out the S, we get bait, B-A-T-E. Um, maybe, but a bit of an awkward word. Um, what about D, take out the T, we get base. So that's a really common word, that's quite likely to be what's, what's needed here. Now we need to try it in the second word. So we try T here. Sick, stick, stick, S-T-I-C-K. So that's a really straightforward one, actually. And there we have it. So you could have spent ages looking at this and thinking, well, bait, B-A-T, can I put that somewhere in the second word? Is that really a word, bait? No, 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 no. You could spend ages on that. But instead I said, okay, that's a bit fiddly. I'll come back to it if I have to, but let's see what D is like. That's a more efficient use of exam time. On to the next one. So now we've got another kind of verbal reasoning challenge. Um, to be honest, the example kind of makes it clear what's going on. Um, we have to put air into answer to get answered. He answered the question in the lesson. Let's just check the instructions though to make sure there aren't any traps. So we've got three letters taken out for alternatives. The three letters must make a word without altering their order and the sentence must now make sense, okay? So two requirements, we need to put the letters in without changing their order, and the sentence needs to be sensible, and that's really important. Um, comments coming in from Facebook. Um, I love VR, I miss this. Well, you don't need to miss it any longer because we're covering it today. I guess that's a comment from somebody who perhaps has done their exams and uh, is coming back to this just out of nostalgia. Um, a Facebook user saying, hi, Dimitri. Uh, Dimitri would say hi, but he's currently, he's chasing a bit of fluff. It's very important. Fluff needs to be rounded up and spread all over the house. It's an important task. Somebody has to do it. Um, Okay, so those are the two requirements. The, the question doesn't make entirely clear whether we have to keep the three letters together or whether we could put them in different places. Whether we can split them up. Question 25. Dave Ennard studying history at his school. Okay, so... And, and so the first thing I'm going to do, you know, I talk about being very analytical and having a system. For these ones, I'm actually, first of all, just going to step back a little bit and not concentrate too hard. He's something studied history, so it passed his time. He, 
He liked studying history. He disliked studying history. That's the really obvious direction for this to go in. Um, in lay, lay and lay and doosen, there's a do, there's, there's, there's joy, joy and joy and joy and he joined studying history. He enjoyed studying history. That works. OK, it makes sense in the sentence. If you're somebody who hates history, you might think, how could you possibly enjoy studying history? That sentence doesn't make sense. But there are some people out there who do. I hope so. I used to be a school history teacher once upon a time, so I really hope this is correct. Um, David enjoyed. So E-N-J-O-Y-E-D. You don't need to put it in the right place. So you just need to know that it's the right answer and write C in the box. Don't try and write joy in the box. Write C. Very important. He also liked, so we're following on the same idea, learning foreign languages. So just looking at that, learning, I really want that to be learning, which should be L-E-A-R, and lo and behold. So I could be going through the way that you try the set of three letters in every possible gap. So earling, learning, 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 but Often you can see these if you just look at the words a bit. You need to do that more systematically if you get stuck. But the first thing to do if you get stuck is to skip the question and come back to it later. At the end of the exam, if you're desperate, you might then try each of these in a very systematic way. At lunchtime, he avoided having cars in his meal. Sound advice. Now, you're required to find a sentence that makes sense. This sentence already grammatically makes sense, and in terms of sort of basic meaning, it also makes sense. He avoided having cars in his meal. He tried to stop them, you know, crashing through the wall and landing on his plate, I suppose. It could be a little messy. But it doesn't make sort of everyday natural sense. It's very weird. Anyway, we need to add some letters. Lunchtime, he avoided having car days in his meal, day cars in his meal. He avoided having ton cars, katonas, katon, car cartons in his meal. So that kind of makes sense. But how much sense does it make? You might say he didn't like having cartons in his lunchbox. He preferred bottles. But would you talk about having a carton in your meal? In a sense, I suppose. I suppose you go and get a happy meal from McDonald's um, and maybe you don't want there to be a carton in it. You want to have your drink in a cup, which tends to be the case, so you're fortunate. Um, but it's still a little bit weird. So B is possible if I can't find something better. But going back to the instructions, it does say the sentence must make sense. And this is on the borderline. It kind of makes sense, but kind of doesn't. OK. He avoid having pie cars. Capis, capi, capis, capis, cars, no. He avoided having carrots in his meal. So is it more likely that he avoided having cartons in his meal or carrots in his meal? Well, I can't find David and ask him because he's a fictional character, I think. But um, I can think about what's more likely. Not whether he prefers cartons or carrots, but which of these things is more likely to be spoken of as belonging in a meal, not with a meal. Carrots are much more likely to be in a meal. D makes more sense. On to this part here. So, oh, don't you love these pairs of letters given? Find the next pair of letters that go in the sequence. OK, and that's everything really that we're told up there that's important. We got an example. So A, Z, B, Y, C, X, D, W. Next pair would be E, V. Why? Because we go A, B, C, D. So the next one, next first letter must be E. Then we look at the second letter, Z, Y, X, W. So Z, Y, X, W, next one is V. So that's how we got EV. There's a really important lesson here. Treat the two letters separately, okay? People get into a tangle by trying to handle them together. Treat them separately, okay? And don't get too carried away with the multiple choice elimination. Generally with these, you're best off simply finding the answer and then looking for it in the options. This is why I talk about being flexible. Sometimes you're going to have a very, very um, clear system and it's going to involve lots of elimination of options. Sometimes, you're, as in the last lot of questions, you're going to step back a bit and just look at the words a bit more vaguely and see what pops out. And you're only going to go to something more mathematical if that fails. Here, you're going to be very, very rigorous and not even look too much at the multiple choice options, I would say, until it comes down to choosing your answer. 
C, Y, D, W, hang on, we're looking at the first letters alone first. C, D, E, F, G. Okay, I'm now going to look at the multiple choice options in case there's only one beginning with G, because then my job's done. But no, there are two beginning with G, so G, Q, or G, T. Y, looking at the second letters, Y, W, U, S. So, Y, W, U, S, we're counting back in twos, must be Q. G, Q, and that's B. So actually quite straightforward once you do it systematically. G, J, M, P. We need to look at our um, alphabet to make that clear. We got what? G, J, M, P. G, J, M, P. So we're going three across each time. Next one must be S. H, L, P, T. H, L, P, T. H, L, P, T. So we're going four across each time. One, two, three, four takes us to X. So S, X, A. Okay, we're absolutely flying through here. B, B, C, C. Hmm, B, B, C, C. Surely it's going to be D. B, B, C, C, D, D, E, E. There's no real na other natural way for the first letters here to travel. So let's go for D here. Long comment here. I have a job in the morning, so I'm going back and I'll see what I've done to help with the work. And I'm sure it would, I would have to go to sleep in the night before bed night or night night. Uh, it sounds like you've got a very busy life. So um, um, I think you're saying night night. So night night, Lady Obami. Um, and I hope um, whatever work you have to do in the morning goes well. Um, shout out for Arizo's ladybug that this is your sister tried to save. Tried to save, that's a bit of a cliffhanger. Um, um, so shout out to the ladybug that may or may not still be with us. Nimi, the whole reason I'm here is because I want to tell Robert I passed the 11 plus. That's fantastic, many congratulations. But why am I reading these comments in the middle of answering a question? That's appallingly ill-disciplined. If you were as poorly disciplined as this, you would never pass your 11 plus, just as I will not pass YouTube plus. What am I on about? So just ignore me. Um, it's good advice, generally, ignore me. Second letters, Y, W, T, P. Okay, so let's look at the alphabet. Y, W, T, P. Hang on, these are not evenly spaced. We've gone one, two, three, four. Next one's gonna be five, surely. One, two, three, four, five. It's gonna be K, D, K. And lo and behold, DK is option C. Do not write DK in the answer box. It will be wrong. You need to put C. Careful. Such a common mistake to make with this kind of test when you're under pressure. Good. And that's the verbal reasoning dealt with. And now comes the meat. Now comes why you are all here. It's the handling data section. Because the verbal reasoning was actually, I think, relatively easy verbal reasoning compared to some tests that you might sit. But the data handling section here is much trickier. It's much more like the difficult comprehension that we looked at uh, in the lesson two weeks ago when we looked at the first half of this paper. Um, and this is um, something to get your teeth into. By the way, if you missed that first lesson, I will add a comment underneath after this lesson in which I provide the link to that video. But you can also find it in the channel. And of course, as I said already, you can find a list of all my lessons, including the other half of this one, in the video list list uh, that's linked under this video. So we've again, we've got four-way multiple choice, as you're familiar with, and we've got a table with information about 10 English counties. For the purposes of questions that follow, a higher rank means closer to first, and a lower rank means closer to 10th. So if a question says which county ranks higher for population than Kent, for example, which is first, is higher ranked than Durham, which is seventh. Make sure that you read the information carefully. Don't make the mistake of thinking that because seven is higher than one, that seventh is a higher rank. It is not. That's common sense, It's all, but it's also the instructions given. But common sense often goes by, by the wayside when you're under pressure in an exam. So read the instructions carefully. Okay, let's do this. I'm going to switch to another view so we can see everything here. So my view here is called Screen Share Data Handling. That's I've got it labeled as in my software. Um, sounds exciting, doesn't it? Great fun. Okay, and here's the first question. 
Look at this beautiful presentation. That's what you come to this channel for, isn't it? Um, Facebook user says, love it. Thank you. I love having you here as well. Uh, it's really brilliant that you should be commenting. Um, which of these counties has both the largest population and the largest area? Now, there are lots of ways of finding this information out from the table, but think for a second. Do you need to look at the population numbers and the areas and start working out which is the largest? No, you don't, because they've already been ranked for you. Kent, uh, I can't write anything on the graphic I've got up here, unfortunately. Um, I could have set it up like that, but then I wouldn't have enough room on my screen to see the comments coming from Facebook. So I've just done it this way. Someone has already given the answer there, well then. Uh, Kent is first for population and first for area, if you look at those rank columns. So you know that that's the answer without actually looking at the numbers for population and area. So the answer is Kent B. Nice little warm up. Which of these counties has the smallest area? Okay, again, you could look at all the numbers for area, but use the data intelligently. It's going to be the one that's ranked last for area. There are 10 counties, so that's the 10th one. So the 10th, look down the column for area, for rank area, and 10th is Worcestershire. Hang on a second. We haven't been given Worcestershire. We're not being asked for the smallest county area overall. We're being asked for the smallest out of the ones given here. That isn't entirely clear from the question. It says which of these counties, that might mean these counties in the table, but from context, it has to mean these counties provided. So we need to look at Derbyshire, Kent, Nottingham, Lanc Leicestershire, sorry, and see which is lowest ranked. Derbyshire, fifth. Kent, first, no, so it's still Derbyshire's winning. Nottinghamshire, seventh, okay, that's our new lowest. Leicestershire, eighth, okay. So Leicestershire has a slightly smaller area than Nottinghamshire and indeed Leicestershire has an area of 2156 kilometres squared compared to 2159 for Nottinghamshire. So the answer is Leicestershire, D. Okay, so we pick D, Leicestershire. Um, I should actually skip over to this area and make sure I'm matching the answers I already did earlier on because I did go through these before because I didn't want to make silly mistakes because silly mistakes, not just in this, but in oh so many things are the bane of my life. Which of these counties has a T20 cricket team named after an animal? Hmm, doesn't seem so data driven, does it? Um, Lancashire Lightning. So this is just about scanning across the table. T20 cricket team, see down the right hand side. So Lancashire Lightning, Nottinghamshire Outlaws. No, I mean, you know, if it was named after Robin Hood, then it would become debatable because it's a human animal. But outlaws in general, they are a group of people. To call that an animal would be both grammatically wrong and in meaning a little bit questionable. Um, Worcestershire, rapids. Hmm. Leicestershire, foxes. I think a fox is an animal. I think we can agree on that. Nice, easy one, really. What is the area rank of the county whose T20 cricket team is the Steelbacks? Quite wordy, but just work backwards. Find the Steelbacks. Okay, Steelbacks. So we go across the table, Northampton 6, blah, 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 blah. Northamptonshire. What is the area rank of Northamptonshire? It is sixth. So that is option C. Okay, so quite straightforward. It's just getting past the words, but do one thing at a time. Find the T20 cricket team column, go down. Find the Steelbacks. Find out which county it is. Northamptonshire, so we're clear we're on that row. Rank is sixth. You actually don't need to read across to see it's Northamptonshire. You can just go Steelbacks, sixth. But anyway, it's clearly option C, whichever way we look at it. Option C, there we are. Which of these counties has a county hat town whose name does not appear in the name of the county? Okay. Now, this one here, we can certainly look at the table, but if you have a little bit of general knowledge, um, you'll get immediately see, for example, that Nottinghamshire, clearly Nottingham, Leicestershire, Leicester, Derbyshire, Derby, Essex, is the county town, S, is it, no, nope, not gonna say that, um, is the town called Essex? No, of course not. Look at the table to check, Essex, go across county town, Chelmsford. So you can look at the table to see this, but in fact, you might be able to see that A, B, B and C clearly have the names of towns in their names. So it's D, Essex. So none of these so far have been particularly horrible. They've just been about 
reading the question carefully and looking at the data in the table intelligently, choosing the most relevant column and then working across from it. And for example, recognizing that when you have to find out which county has the smallest population, for example, that you don't need to compare all the population numbers, you just need to look at the rank population and find the lowest rank, just for instance. Um, so it's about, you know, being calm, not flustered, and looking at the table sensibly. Which of these T20 cricket teams plays in a county with a larger population than County Durham? Okay, County Durham, we're talking about population and its rank is seventh. So that means that any higher rank than seventh means a larger population. So any rank that's one, two, three, four, five, or six is going to be valid here. So the bears, Look at the T20 cricket teams. Bears, we go across population rank 10th. No. Lightning, go across population rank 3rd. So Lightning, that's Lancashire, Lancashire Lightning, the population rank is 3rd, which means a larger population than County Durham, which is 7th. So B is the answer. Once you've found a definite answer, you don't need to check the other options here. It's not like comprehension, for example, where there might be an even better answer. There can only be one answer for these. If you found the right answer and you're confident of it, then it must be the answer. Write it down and move on. All this stuff about T20, T20 cricket, I just find it depressing. I'm really, really, really not a T20 cricket fan. I just think if you're just going to watch people just sort of bashing stuff around for... Um, um, bashing stuff around for, um, you know, for a couple of hours. Why not just get into baseball? Um, love test cricket. I've always loved test cricket and T20 just makes me feel a bit sad. I watch wickets falling and most of the time they don't even celebrate that much because a wicket isn't that important. The only reason a wicket really matters is because it slows down the run rate for the next over or two. It doesn't have that much importance in its own right. Um, where's the excitement of that when all people want to see is batsmen smashing sixes everywhere? Um, it's sad people. I sound like an old fuddy-duddy, but T20 cricket, the world's going to pot. On to the next one. So now we have the table repeated here. That's because it's a booklet and they want you to always be able to see the data, but we've got that with our cunning split screen. The data's up there, so we can skip past this reiteration of the table. It's exactly the same data. And now we have some more questions. And as you saw with the comprehension, when you have a certain lot of questions and then they give you the passage again and then a new lot, this is sometimes where they start to stick their harder, more challenging questions, where the wording is more fiddly and where you frankly have to engage what little you have in there a little bit more intensively. Which is, this is real, I would say it's stroking beard time, but I mean, this is not beard, this is just me having not shaved for a couple of days, which is outrageous. Um, oh dear, lax in my old age. Okay, um, Tanya says, hello, all friends who may take the 11 plus, be aware that you have nothing to worry about. Thank you for the reassurance, Tanya. Um, and yes, be reassured, everybody. Um, Tanya also says, babe, where are you? I don't know if that's a reference to the big babe, Dimitri. Uh, where is he? Where is it, Dimitri indeed? Where's he got to? I'm not quite sure. Uh, maybe he's gone outside into the balcony. Um, which of these countries has a higher population rank than area rank? Okay, remember the wording at the top that said higher rank means a lower number. So the highest rank of all is first, not tenth. Higher population rank than area rank. So we're looking for a lower rank number in the population rank column than in the area rank column. So for example, if population rank is three, area could be four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten. Warwickshire. Population rank is 9, area rank is, so is 10, area rank is 9. No, wrong way around. Kent, they're both 1. Nottinghamshire, uh, 4 versus 7, yes. So 37 is clearly option C. 38. Which of these counties has an area greater than 2,500 kilometer squares but a population of less than 1 million? So now we actually have to look at the numbers. Durham, Essex, Lancashire, Derbyshire. Let's look at the area first. Durham um, greater than is greater than 2,500. Essex also, Lancashire also, Derbyshire also. 
So they all have an area greater than 2,500. That's a red herring. Population less than a million. So it actually just boils down to which of these has a population less than a million. So County Durham, yes, 800,000 and something. So we got the answer already, it's A. That was actually quite straightforward, which is nice. Oh, which of these statements is true, which of these statements is false? These can be really annoying, these questions. Can I fit this in? Yes, I can, good. Um, because you've often got to read in detail and you've got to try a little, oh, do I need coffee? It's the only option here. But it's question 39. We've only got this and one more question, and then we're done. Amazing. Nottinghamshire has a higher rank for population than County Durham's rank for area. Nottinghamshire rank for population, four. County Durham rank for area, four. They're the same, so A is not true. It is untrue. The Falcons T20 cricket team, take this a bit of time. Falcons, that's Derbyshire, is based in a county with a higher population than the county in which the Lightning T20 ticket team is based. Lightning, Lancashire. So we've got Derbyshire and Lancashire. So we're saying Derbyshire has a higher population than Lancashire. So this is one of these questions where you have to cut through the complexity of the words and just see what the simple statement is. Derbyshire has a higher population than Lancashire. Derbyshire, 1,049,000. Lancashire, 1,490,000. So, not true. Northampton is the county town of a county with a larger area than Derbyshire. Northampton is the county town of, hmm, Northamptonshire. So, Northamptonshire has a larger area than Derbyshire. Northamptonshire, 2,364. Derbyshire, 2,625. No. So it must be D, unless I've made a mistake in reading one of those. The T20 cricket team that will be first in alphabetical order is based in the county with the smallest population. Which of these is quickest to find out? It's the smallest population, because you just look for the 10th ranked county for population. 10th ranked for population, Warwickshire. T20 cricket team is the Bears. What do we say about the cricket team? First in alphabetical order. So B, is there anything else that begins with A or B? No, among the cricket teams. So that is indeed a true statement. So it is indeed D. So this is a bit more like a, a comprehension, multiple choice comprehension question you might be familiar with. We go through eliminating, and then when we've got one left, we check that it is indeed true. Which of the following statements is, oh no, I can't scroll further because I've got to the bottom. Ah, what am I gonna do about this? Right, I'm gonna have to do some quick messing around with my screen here. Excuse me a second. Let's hope I don't break the world. Pull that down there, pull that up. This was not part of my plan, but I didn't think things through properly because I am a fool. If it was an 11 plus in streaming platform, streaming platform use, I would fail it. There we are, I think that's good. Oh, excellent. What could be better than that? Okay, anyway, moving on from that slightly embarrassing moment, which of the following statements is false? Okay, so this means that we have to eliminate the correct statements and settle on one that is not correct. Oh no, these are so annoying, but at least it's the last question. So if you dealt with the other things, you can give time to doing this carefully. One thing, I'm taking a pause before I go into this, give you a bit of a mental rest as well. One thing I spoke about in the last lesson on this paper was how, yes, you have to move very, very quickly through this. You have very limited time and um, superficially you have to just keep buzzing from question to question to question. However, we've seen there are quite a lot of questions that you can get through much more quickly than the allotted time. So for example, the verbal reasoning questions that we did, some of those you'll be able to see really quickly. And so in fact, when you get a question like this, you may well have a couple of minutes to do it if you've timed your exam in a sensible fashion. Um, okay, false statements. The two counties with the smallest populations, okay, rank population, we need nine and 10. So this is about rationally using the table and not going to the population numbers, just going straight to the ranks. Rank population, nine and 10, Warwickshire and Worcestershire, bottom two rows of the table. 
Also have county towns that would be last in alphabetical order. Go to the county towns column, Warwick and Worcester. They begin with W. They're really likely to be the last ones. And in fact, if we look at the list of county towns, everything else begins with letters earlier in the alphabet than W. And so we're fine. In fact, I think the county towns are all in, they're almost in alphabetical order, apart from Durham and Derby, um, because it's the counties that are in alphabetical order. So this is a true statement, which means it's the answer. No, it doesn't. Keep an eye on the question. We need the false statement. That was correct. So it is not the answer. The two counties with the largest populations have areas of more than 3,600 kilometres squared. Largest populations, they are going to be the highest population ranks first and second. Kent and Essex. And their areas are both over 3,600. So that is a true statement. That one's quite easy to check, fortunately. There are three counties in which the name of the T20 cricket team starts with the same letter as the name of the counties, county. A little bit fiddly to look at. Let's see where the D is quicker to look at. The Lightning cricket team is based in the county with the same rank for population and area. Lightning, Lancashire, third, third. So that's true. So we can be virtually certain that C is right, unless we've made a mistake, it is. But now, because I have 30 seconds left in my exam, I'm going to check it. Three counties in which the name of the t Frankie trick team starts with the same letter as the name of the county. Jets, County Durham, no. Falcons, Derbyshire, no. Eagles, Essex, yes. Spitfires, Kent, no. Lightning, Lancashire, yes. Foxes, Leicestershire, no. Steelbacks, Northamptonshire, no. Outlaws, Nottinghamshire, no. Bears, Warwickshire, no. Rapids, Worcestershire, no. So there are two counties, not three. So C is false, and that makes C our answer. And there we are, we've done it. It looks like an L, but it can only be a C, so I'm pretty sure this is going to be marked right, even though my handwriting is horrible. Arathi says, Noel, you're a savage. What's Noel done to... Wow, Noel says, I am not your friend, okay. Noel really is a savage. Um, yeah. Um, Tayoshi, how are you so smart, Mr Lomax? By finding a set of questions and solving them before I do the lesson so that I secretly appear to know everything. Um, yeah, perfect planning prevents mm, poor performance, uh, allegedly. Uh, okay, CIA the answer, Mr. Lomax. Cryptic, Tayashi, cryptic. It's Noel, I am not scared of dumb buses. What's a dumb bus? I don't know, is it a... Um, is it maybe a, a self-driving bus? But then I don't know. I don't know what he's on about. What is he on about? What's he ever on about? Not very much, I think. Astro Boost, I've done my Thomas Telford exams and Adam's grammar. Woohoo! Congratulations. I hope they went well. And I hope that, um, yeah, you go to somewhere you're really happy, whether or not it turns out to be one of those schools. Right, let's pop in to this week's... It's the tip. It's the tip of the week. So, the tip of the week this week. Um, I'm going back to an old favourite. Um, just a reminder, because people are quite likely, there are some people who will now have exams coming up in uh, November, December, January, but there'll also be quite a few people here who are preparing for exams that are about a year away. And so speaking especially to those people, now is the time to have an honest look at your English and ask yourself whether your fundamental grammar skills are good. Now is the time to say, do I really know exactly where to place a full stop, a comma, a question mark, a quotation mark, an apostrophe reliably without making silly mistakes? Um, and now is also the time, if the answer to that is, hmm, maybe 90% of the time, but the other 10% mm -mm, to sort it out. These are actually not difficult skills to get on top of once you have a clear approach. Um, I would encourage you to have a look at my video on punctuation skills in this channel in which I'm holding a big comma or apostrophe like that. It's a big blue thing and I'm going, as I look down at it, ooh, that's quite good cross eyes there. Um, and uh, that video will really help to get you started and then find other resources online, other exercises. I recommend the um, blog website for Grammarly, which is really good for some of these grammar points for giving really clear, simple summaries of a lot of different principles when you search for them. So itchy cheek. Um, it's probably because I haven't shaved. Should do that. Probably do that after the lesson. Should have done it before the lesson. Set a good example. Never mind. Um, 
But what am I on about? I'm not giving you a tip of the week about shaving. You're all nine, ten years old. What is my goodness me? Um, uh, anyway, yeah. Sort your grammar out now. Get your grammar fundamentals in order. Um, because when the exams are nearer, and it's something that's holding you back, you'll suddenly have a lot of other things to deal with. It'll suddenly feel like a big burden, and you might not get it sorted, and then it'll cause you problems. So, do with grammar essentials now, and you'll be thankful for it later. Let's take some questions. Tanya says, how dare you? I don't have a beard. Uh, I'm very sorry, Tanya, that you don't have a beard. Um, be patient, and as time passes, maybe you eventually will. Um, and so you won't necessarily always be missing out. Um, Gemma, hello Robert, I'd like to say thank you since I passed my 11 plus exam. That makes me very happy to hear. I'm delighted to know that I could have been a small part in helping you, and it's wonderful that you come back to this channel to say thank you, even though you've done your exams. Um, I really appreciate it, thank you. Astroboost. Robert, if you've done all your 11 plus exams, do you still need to do VR and NVR or not? Um, uh, probably not, unless you have some other test coming up in which you need to do these things. I mean, verbal reasoning is still kind of useful English practice, but realistically, I never turned my side light on. What's going to happen if I do that now? Ta-da. Wow. That's so much better. I should have had that on from the start. I just forgot to switch it on. Oh, well, never mind. Worst things happen in life. Um, like my facial hair. Um, probably not, but if someone's telling you you need to because you have got something up coming up in which you need it, then continue to do it. Um, of course, there are other things you may do in the future which involve those elements, other exams that may involve kinds of nonverbal and spatial reasoning. These kinds of things do keep coming up in all kinds of exams for various things, even sometimes including university admissions and admission and job applications and oh. um, ho ho ho. Any graps? Any graps? Any apps you recommend for grammar? Asks D. I'm sure there are good ones, but I don't know what to recommend. If you have any, if you find any good ones, feel free to come back here and tell me about them. What team do you support? I don't know what sport we're talking about here. Um, how old are you? I am, uh, well, how old am I? I think I'm 76, aren't I? Um, Mr. Lomax, will you ever be a farmer? I think this might be a comment on my very farmerish, fluffy sideburns. Guys, I've got a, um, um, I've got a haircut tomorrow morning, so I'll get rid of them. So do not be distressed by the state of my head. Um, no, I don't think I will be a farmer. Um, can I have a shout out to my cat Sky? She is an amazing cat, just like your cat, but she deserves love. Not but she deserves love, and she deserves love. Um, absolutely, Sky. Uh, you deserve love, Sky. Um, can you apologise for wearing a Manchester United kit? I'm not wearing a Manchester United kit. I'm wearing a red T-shirt. Um, it's not a Man United kit. On the video cover, Dimitri is wearing a Manchester United kit, but you can hardly hold me ac me accountable for my cat's sporting preferences. Um, Amal, you don't pass with distinction. That's for music. How do you practice when you have done your 11 plus exam? Uh, you practice for the things that you are are preparing for, right? Or you practice for the skills that you're working on at school and for other useful things in life. Heritage Agabaye, I passed all three 11 plus exams with distinction. Thanks, Robert. Uh, that's absolutely fantastic. Uh, many, many congratulations. I'm glad to have been able to help. Uh, that now I understand why someone was talking about distinction only being for music exams. Some people are so, there's a word for this that I'm not allowed to use on a children's channel, but some people are so pedantic. Clearly, um, this person is not saying that they officially scored a distinction with a capital D. They're saying that they got really good marks. So they mean with distinction. They don't mean with distinction. Um, how do you practice when you don't answer that one already? Robert, are most of your videos on CEM? Uh, no, some of my videos are on CEM style exams. Uh, some of them um, happen to be similar, even though they're not specifically CEM, and many of them are completely different. I cover all different kinds of 11 plus tests in these videos. If you have a look at the video list link below, you'll see that there are all manner of different exam styles covered there. And I've got loads of videos and things like creative writing and written comprehension and so on that aren't covered in CEM tests. Can you apologize on wearing your Manchester United? No, because I'm not wearing one, um, nor have I ever worn one, I think. 
Um, is David Williams a good author? I haven't read much of his stuff, but uh, I think I've read one of his books, uh, but I quite liked it. Um, what team, I think it was Gangster Granny, what team do you support? Answer that one already. Depend. I don't know what sport you're talking about, but probably the answer is not really. Um, I would recommend the house book. She's blah, 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 blah. I don't know what else to answer to. I'm going to wrap up soon. I'm really tired. Um, when you did the 32 to 40 questions, wasn't it maths, not English? Oh, yeah, that's a fair question. Um, so uh, it's not maths, uh, really. You have to look at some numbers. It's data handling. Um, they call this exam English, but I think you could also call this exam comprehension skills because it is comprehension. You're given... Um, you're given a set of information and you have to understand it. You have to understand the question and the information given in English, I should point out, understand the meaning of that, then apply it to the information above and find out what the right answer is. Um, whether you want to call that English or comprehension, definitely the best term would be data handling, but um, to say a data handling exam at 11 plus, people go, what is that? Because it isn't part of the normal 11 plus. Uh, and so they've just bunched it into an exam that they've called English Section A. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't normally call that English, you're right. But I don't think I call it maths either. You can't be calculating anything. I love your cat, says Louise. Uh, what breed is your cat? She is her cat. It's a he, but um, um, even though he has been castrated, he is very much a he. Um, and he is a, a Siberian forest cat. Um, uh, which is a rather fantastic breed of cat. Uh, the thing about Siberian cats is that they uh, evolved kind of on the edge of human settlements. So they're not a kind of cat that was selectively bred to look like that, I think, as far as people know. Um, I think it's what's known as a land race. Um, so when you find animals that have grown up, that have evolved uh, their characteristics through interaction with humans, and so adapting to human behaviour and what pleases humans and makes them given things, but haven't actually been selectively bred by humans and are kind of semi-wild, it's known as a land race, and that's what Siberian cats are. Um, and they were actually um, introduced... They came into Europe quite late on, really, in any widespread way. They actually went to America. I'm not in America, but I, I read that they only went to America in the 1990s. So they've only really become an internationally well-known breed very recently. Uh, but I think they're absolutely fantastic cats. Um, does he support Spurs? I don't support any football teams apart from England, um, to be honest. So um, that makes your life easy. No one has to hate me, apart from all football fans. Where is your merch you promised a year ago? Uh, well, so I produce pencil cases and pens, and now because I have channel memberships, they're now something that you get if you become a channel member. So if you click join under the video, if you're watching on a computer or tablet, you'll see a join button, click on that, it won't commit you to anything. You'll see all the options for channel membership and what merch they can um, make available for you. Um, Robert, I know your secret, you have 1,000 children. I really hope not. Um, um, I wonder how that could have come about. Robert is the best teacher. Who? Easy 11 plus is C smiley smiley L. It's cool. Easy 11 plus is cool. Yay, thank you. Thank you, Dolly Liz. Thank you. It's cool. Be nice. My Adams Grammar results are coming tomorrow. I can't wait, but at the same time, I'm scared if I don't pass. I, I, I know your feeling that you're wait, sitting there waiting for the envelope or nowadays probably the email to drop. But I think you've already passed some other tests, haven't you? So you're doing really well. Um, Sarah Side supports Chelsea. Somebody has to. Um, who is your favourite England player? I'll ask Dimitri when he comes back. Um, I'm in year four. Should I still watch your videos? Do you have any recommendations on your videos and which ones I should watch to pass my 11 plus? Um, yeah, good question. Loads of people in year four do watch these videos. I think you will get a sense of whether a video, look at the worksheet for each video and you'll see that whether a particular video is at a level and involves knowledge that you're already reasonably comfortable with or whether it's just far too difficult. And if it's far too difficult, save it for later. If it isn't, watch it now and learn. Um, so use the uh, video list, look at all the worksheets, and you'll get a sense of um, which videos are useful for you now. Uh, but even the hard ones, there's no harm watching them, uh, you might still learn things from them. The creator, I did my first exam at Christ Hospital last Saturday. I was a student at Christ Hospital. I was then also a history teacher at Christ Hospital. I'm a big fan of Christ Hospital. I hope it went well for you, the creator. 
can you do a full CEM paper live, please? Never say never. Um, uh, what I might do is go through the CEM select online test, perhaps, um, uh, possibly. Um, how long have you been a teacher? Well, I'm 76 now, and I first started teaching when I was in my early 20s, so a very, very long time. Um, CEM has been cancelled from 2023. Now, I think that's a misunderstanding of um, what's going on there. It's not as simple as that. Um, do, 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 do. Sarah Syed, I know they're bad, but my family supports it. I don't know what we're talking about here. Are we talking about, you know, um, I, I don't know, not sure. CEM, maybe. Um, let's not get into I know that inter exam board rivalries are a passionate topic here, but let's not get into that. Right, okay, um, I think someone says, you do not look 76, thank you so much. I, I agree, I carry my years well. And on that note, I think we might wrap up. Let's see if Dimitri wants to come back. Dimitri, I've got his treats, that might be the magic thing. Dimitri, Dimitri, let's see whether he comes. Yep, he's coming. See the paws scratching on the floor. Dimitri, come on boy, have a treat, and your friends are here as well. Your fans want to see you. There's a treat, look, there's a treat. It's a treat, it's a treat. Will it bring him up? And can I stop him getting the whole box? Here's the treat. Come on, boy. Here you go. There we are. Dimitri gets his treat. Dimitri's happy. You're happy because you've had a fantastic lesson about Manchester Grammar School and about all these skills. Dimitri hasn't bitten me yet today, which is fantastic. Let's see if we can keep on trying to train him not to bite. We're both trying to train him not to bite. Um, he's not very keen on that because he loves biting. Um, check out all the links in the video description. Uh, particularly look at the link for free resources. Uh, click on that and you can sign up and I send you some wonderful free resources with detailed answers into your email. And also have a look at 11 Plus Lifeline. It's very useful. It's been wonderful to have you here and I look forward to seeing you next Tuesday at six o'clock when we are going to be looking at written comprehension skills. Oh, and there goes Dimitri. Bye-bye.